Over the last few years, one of my personal favorite places on the planet has become the Driftless area of Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. The area takes its name from the fact that it was spared from the leveling crush of glaciers that flattened the rest of the Midwest during the Pleistocene epoch. Now it stands out in the Midwest as an area of gorgeous vein-like creeks and limestone outcroppings. You can almost think of it as a nice dandy buckle on America's Corn Belt. While the Driftless area is known for many things, including phenomenal deer hunting and great small game hunting, it's particularly well known for its brook trout fishing. And brook trout are, of course, the only native trout that we have east of the Mississippi River. However, the brook trout's existence in the Driftless has not always been guaranteed. Starting over a century ago, intense agriculture in the surrounding landscape sent millions of tons of eroded soil and millions of pounds of fertilizer down into the Driftless and it threatened the very streams upon which brook trout depended. It buried gravel bars and silt and degraded water quality to the point where native aquatic life was threatened. For a while there, it seemed like the story of the Driftless area was coming to a sad end. But thankfully, we were able to reverse the trend. Because of the Federal Farm Bill, we could channel funding into the hands of thousands of private landowners who were eager to make conservation improvements on their own private land, but didn't always have the funding to make it possible. I'm talking about simple, highly effective things like a cost share program for fencing along streams to keep cattle from trotting down into the riparian zone, or planting forest buffers to help stabilize eroding creek beds. And these things not only helped the land where the projects occurred, but they benefited the land downstream from those projects as well. And thanks to that, we were able to reverse the bad trend in the Driftless and restore native brook trout habitat. The Farm Bill still works for us today by sending critical dollars to landowners who agree to take steps to improve the natural resources on their own ground. And while the taxpayer investment in these programs is essential, their power is multiplied two, three, and sometimes four times by additional resources that local, regional, and national conservation organizations bring to the table. Through the efforts of groups like Pheasants Forever, one dollar invested by the American taxpayer becomes four dollars that can be invested in habitat improvement. And those improvements tend to be far-reaching. Building a fantastic patch of pheasant cover helps control runoff and absorb nutrients in order to send clean water downstream to the Driftless Area's brook trout. But for several years now, the Farm Bill Conservation Programs have been as threatened as the Driftless Area's brook trout once were. Federal budgets are tight, but when the federal investment evaporates out here on the ground, the impetus for much of this good conservation work evaporates along with it. If we roll back Farm Bill Conservation Programs too far, we might push some critical habitat past the point of no return. And as a sportsman, that's not a future that I can support. If you agree with me, you should contact your local elected officials and let them know that you support Farm Bill Conservation Programs, and they should too. And if you want to find out more about the Farm Bill and its related conservation programs, you should visit www.trcp.org.